we're not idiots, we're not evil, we're not this, we're not that, right? I mean, it's fine. It's just, I'm just living my life, dude. Like, you, dude, this white brother right here, white sister right here, all they want, they're just here. You're here at Penn State, you just want to get a job and go get your job, and like, that's fine. You know what I mean, right? That's it. You're not like, you don't, you don't want the, the black and brown people in here to be discriminated against. Like, you don't want that. You want to compete fairly, right? The, the, the issue is, you, you, you get, we get benefits. It's called affirmative action from being white. That we don't see it. What, you, what we see are these programs, affirmative action programs. Women and people of color are particularly encouraged to apply, right? It's like we see those things. We don't see all of the myriad ways everywhere, everywhere, everywhere in which it really benefits us to be white people. And I say everywhere because every time we do these tester studies, we see the discrimination. And it's, it's not like, okay, that doesn't mean, it's not every case. What I'm saying is every time we do them, we see discrimination. We never do not see discrimination. We never don't see it. You got it? It's there. Against women, against people of color. It's never not there. Sam. Yes. AJ. I'm up here. I know, we, you're going to introduce me later, but I, I, I just have a point I want to make. About. All right, go ahead. All right, all right. <laughs> Okay, so I'm this judge that's going to be talking to you in a few minutes, and Sam's got a whole slide, and he's going to introduce me and everything. So stick around. You'll get that. Here's the thing. Here's, the, here's what bothers me, is, it bothers me as I sit here as, as a retired judge, I and mean, I'm sitting here listening to this. Because a lot of you probably think that what you can do, to, you know, well, just go to court. Sue them. They're discriminating. Go to court. If they do, they'll probably lose. And they'll lose just because what Sam's talking about. When I became a lawyer 40 years ago, I'm old. When I became a lawyer 40 years ago, I, I went to a, a course on um, civil rights and uh, how you do it, how you prove a civil rights case, how you prove a discrimination case. And I was told, and this was true back then, I was told what we, you have to do is bring in the statistics you bring in the statistics, you will show that there's discrimination going on, and you win. Your client wins because there is provable discrimination going on. Then about the mid-'80s, the Supreme Court of the United States changed it all and said, oh, I think we're wrong handling it this way. No, unless this person can show discrimination in this individual case, they're not being discriminated against. So, as Sam says, hey, you, there's no discrimination in that case when you got followed. There's no discrimination in that case when you got picked up. There's no discrimination in that case when you didn't get the job. That's what the court's going to tell you, too. Because you can't prove discrimination unless somebody was dumb enough along the line to say, I ain't hiring no black people. Unless they got you cold, you have no remedy for what's there, except legislation that grants you affirmative action, but good luck getting that through the, 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 the political process these days. Dude. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. We'll come back. Yeah, very good. Dude, thank you for doing you mess, that. Mess up your timing, man. <laughs> I'll officially introduce AJ shortly. I thought God Judge was talking Wagner. to us when he started speaking. I thought God was speaking to us for a second. <laughs> well, it is God. He's a judge. You know what I mean? All right, so listen. Go to the next one. Here we go. No, go back. Go back. Ready? Go back. Remember these numbers, y'all. Ready? Remember 2016. Remember these numbers. This is all. We're, we're not including all the other groups. We're just going right here. 39 million, 195 million. Okay? Remember those numbers. Got, got it? Can you hold on to that? Okay. Next slide. Male incarceration, rate, incarceration rates by rate. This is 2010, but I used it because I made this slide. It was really nice. Bureau of Justice, look at this. Out of every 100,000 black males, 4,347 are in prison. Out of every 100,000 white males, 678 are in prison. Dudes, that doesn't in itself say discrimination. Because it might be that black people commit more crimes than white people. In fact, black people, on average, commit more crimes than white people. Okay? But, dude, can you go back one? Seriously? Look at the numbers here. There, there's so many more. Black people, go forward. 
really, are, are, are black people committing that many more crimes? Black males than white males? That many more crimes? Really? Like, do you understand, like, what that has to be? That's like, you know, the thing I did the other day of, like, how many gay people, how many people in the United States, what percentage of the population is gay? And the average answer is 25%. And it's three and a half. And it's like, really? Do you really think black people are committing that many more crimes? It's like, it's everywhere you turn, you see. Go, go to the next slide. Here's one. Percent of people aged 12 to 25 uh, years of age who sell drugs. Whites, 6.6% of whites who sell drugs between these years. Blacks, 5% who sell drugs between these years, okay? So, go back two slides, bro. Sorry about that. Do you know how many more white people that is than black people who are selling drugs? You get it, right? Look at the numbers here. 6.6% of this number, 5% of that number do you know how many more white people are selling drugs? A lot more white people. It's like, here's what it is, basically. This section, if this room was all like a proportionately drug dealers, this section would be the black section, and all the rest of you would be all the white people. Even smaller than that, like half of this section. Okay, go, then, go ahead. Illegal drug use and incarceration, percentage drug users. So here we are, percentage, right? Of all the drug users, of all the drug users in the United States, about 70% are white and about 12% are black. And then you have Hispanics, Asians. And here, percentage in prison for drugs. How do you go from here to here? How do you do that? What goes on here? Right? What's happening? What is happening that leads black people to be funneled into this system of prison? Like, what's going on? It's, at some level, it's the same thing that's going on when we hold two resumes up and the employer then looks at the resume of the dark-skinned person and the light-skinned person is just like, nah, I'm going to go with the light-skinned person, even if this is a better candidate. We create a story, and the story we create is about violence. Look, next one, man. Arrest rates for marijuana possession by race. White people, by far the greatest number of users, possessors of marijuana are white people. Look here, arrest rate. Look at black arrest rate, man. Per 100,000 people. Look at that. Whites stay steady. We just keep going up the whole decade. Dude, seriously? Are, dude, black people, are you just dumb? You know how to not get caught? This is possession, y'all. This, isn't, this is not like black people or brown people or white people standing on the corners selling crack or weed or something. This is possession. So what are we saying? Black people, are, they're just really dumb? They just get caught? What are you doing? Are y'all just walking around smoking blunts in public or something? Like, seriously. Like, what's going on here? White people, you know what this is? If, evidently, if police in the courts or someone's so busy looking for black people, we must get away. Out of school suspensions. Once again, you just, everywhere we turn, this, we don't know. We don't know what really happens. Look, 20% of all the black kids are getting suspended. Right? Here we are. Equity Project. Look at this. Males. Compared to white males. Compared to Asian males, American, look at this, 20%. Why is it so high, man? Everywhere we go, out of school suspension. It's like with little kids, we start immediately seeing the dark-skinned kids as more violent, more problematic, more troublesome, more. They can do the same thing as the white kid, but somehow it can be described differently. But we need to really hold on to that, that kid's going to be out of control. And the best thing to do for that kid, and AJ can talk about this, is like we need to send this kid into the justice system or we need to suspend them or we need to do something else. It's a mentality of white supremacy and racism against dark-skinned people. It's just fundamental, y'all, right? It, did, it doesn't, oh my God, next one. Here we go. Hey, this is just in Connecticut. You can go to every state and find the data. Here's Connecticut, right? Disproportionate suspension of black and Latino students. So here we are. The total enrollment of white students, 65%. But of all the kids that get suspended, 23 are white. 
Total enrollment of black kids in the state of Connecticut is 13. 13% of all the students in the schools in Connecticut are black. 39% of all the kids that get suspended are black. Seriously? Seriously? Dude, these are people's lives. This, this, these are people's lives. When you're treating little kids like this, you know, and it may be, okay, maybe the black kids are just a little bit more aggressive when they act out. But then we do tester studies. We do studies. And we sit down, we go into schools, and we look exactly, exactly what did the child do? How many suspensions did they have? How many times did they actually get in trouble? And we come, when we compare one kid with the other kid when they're exactly the same they've done the same number of things wrong they've been in trouble the same number of times etc we see this black kids hispanic kids get treated differently do you ever like listen sometimes to people who are activists and are black activists right like political activists maybe black lives matter or something you ever listen sometimes people listen to them talk and they're really pissed they're really angry and maybe you're watching them on the news or you, someone's got a, at a rally or something. I mean, you see something on Facebook and someone's really pissed. I'd be pissed. Juvenile incarceration rates in the U.S. per 100,000 years. Look at this, man. Really? How are black kids, are they really committing that many more crimes? Are they really that much more dangerous? Are they really... Next one. Which juveniles are transferred to the adult system? Look, look at this. This is from the Justice Institute. Look, here's the thing. And I'm going to have AJ talk about this. Look, you can go, you can get in trouble, school suspension, and you stand in front of a judge. You go to court and you stand in front of a judge. And then the judge has got to decide your fate. Somehow your fate's going to get decided. And they're going to treat you as a juvenile, maybe send you home with your parents or do something with juvenile court, which is going to be more lenient, of course, right? Or they're going to decide, hey, we're going to, actually, you're really a problem. We're going to send you to the adult system, the adult court, which means you might go to prison with adults. We're going to send you that way. So you're standing there, you got to decide, like somehow you're going to go, you're going to, they're going to, you're going to be seen as a kid. Or you're going to be seen as an adult. And when you're seen as an adult, as a young age, and you're treated as an adult, and then you get into the system, and it's a very different world, y'all, right? It's a very different world. You're, look, your, your records are less likely to be expunged. You're going to just be, you're going to engage more and more people that are really not violent, not in your best interest, not in whatever the case is. And look, black, ki- black kids. 18.4 times more likely. Latinos, 7.3 times more likely. 4.5 times more likely. Dudes, all of you, white juvenile delinquents, those of you who got in trouble with the law, that's white, that's, that's affirmative action for you. It's beautiful. Those of you white people, you're going to have white kids. If your kid gets in trouble, it means it's going to be less likely to go that route. It's beautiful. It's not beautiful. This is what we're talking about. Right? Next one. Here, this is just Florida. 55, here are the numbers. 55% white, 16% black, 25% Hispanic. This is a study that just came out this year, just recently, okay? Okay, 16% black, 55% white. Next slide. Look at this, okay? All, these are just, bo- these are all youth, okay? These are, so we're looking at all youth in Florida, okay? Follow this. I know that it's hard sometimes to follow data, but I'm going to walk you through. These are, these are just the boys. So of all the boys that get transferred to the adult system, of all the kids that get transferred to the adult system, boys and girls, 28% of all the kids that are arrested, right? 28% are black boys. 29% are black or white boys. 
11% are Hispanic boys, then you have Asian boys, and then you have all the girls, and it all equals 100. So of all the kids that are arrested, right, 27% are black boys, boys and girls, okay? Got it? But look at 50, 51% of all the kids that get transferred to the adult system are black boys. Once again, it's a whole system. It's a whole